G'day Throttlers, welcome to the channel again. Today we're out at Penrith Motorcycle Centre and we're taking the Kawasaki Vulcan 900 Classic for a test ride. This is Kawasaki's mid-range cruiser. They've got a 1500cc cruiser and they've got a 650cc as well. This sits nicely in the middle and uh, we're going to take it out on our test ride review today. So stick around for the Vulcan 900 Classic review. All right, Throttlers, you join me today on the Kawasaki Vulcan Classic 900. Now, this is the first cruiser I've been on in quite some time. I've been riding lots of, uh, lots of cafe racer style, lots, lots of sports bikes, and uh, I haven't been on a cruiser since, I think, the Harley-Davidson Sports Glide review that I did uh, last year sometime. And, I have to say, even though I love cruisers, it is taking me a while to get used to this position, this seating position with my feet forward. Sitting back. And using footboards too. All right, so let's get up to motorway speed, 110 kilometers an hour. All right, let's talk about this cruiser, the Kawasaki Vulcan 900. So it's a 903 cc engine. It's got a five speed gearbox. And I'm in fifth gear now. You can see on the speedo, I'm doing the speed limit for this motorway, which is 110 kilometers an hour. And even though it's only five speed, it is actually really quite comfortable at this speed in fifth gear. Really quite nice. Now, if I can test my memory a little bit, I'm thinking power-wise, we're looking at uh, 37 kilowatts and 84 newton meters of torque. So obviously this sort of bike is really good down low and through the mid-range but when you get up into the top end uh, she's a cruiser so you're not going to be pulling big numbers at the top end uh, but nor do you want to on this style of bike at all the ergonomics of the bike is very very comfortable now as i said it did feel awkward when i got back on here for the first time because well i haven't ridden a cruiser for a long long time and uh been doing lots of sports bikes, lots of cafe racer styles and nakeds and uh, and it's a very different experience to get back onto a cruiser again especially with floorboards but now I've been on it for even only like less than five minutes and it's comfy as you would expect it's really really nice we're heading up the hill into the Blue Mountains now so although you can't see on the camera this is a, a decent hill Let's see if we can pull a little overtake past this high ace. 
fifth gear roll on. We're still in a 90k zone, so I can't go too much quicker. Uh, but it rolls on really nice, pulling up the hill very, very strong indeed. The, comp the, the seat is, uh, is super comfy. It's like sitting on a lounge chair. And, uh, and there's a real strong bolstering just on your lower back or your, your bum so you don't move backwards in the seat. And uh, you really, really feel confident when you pull on the throttle. All right, so we've tucked into a nice little right-hander here. I came in a bit hotter than I expected, but it, it adjusted really nicely. And it's just really, really pulling up the hill nicely. Now also tipping into the corner, this is a 281 kilo bike. So it's certainly not a light bike by any means, but it feels like the center of gravity is very low because uh, when I tipped it in there, it leant over exactly where I wanted it to. It was just really nice position. Feels like I'm riding a bike that's almost half its weight, uh, which is a good quality to have when you're riding a, a, a bigger styled bike like this. These handlebars are, are really out wide like bullhorns, but I really like the, the seating position with it like this. It does feel like a real classic cruiser. Uh, some of the original Harleys uh, came out with these handlebars, or this style of handlebar, and I really like it. It's, um, it's sit back, you're very comfortable. You, there's no pressure on my hands or my shoulders. Uh, we can hold a nice upright seating position. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really nice set of handlebars, considering that they are stock. Been in Australia, one thing to consider when you're purchasing a motorbike is the rego and insurance cost of these things. Now, I'm only throwing some rough numbers at you here, because I don't know the exact numbers, but from memory, the 250cc to 725cc is the most affordable bracket when it comes to registration and insurance. Then from 725 to just over a thousand cc, it jumps up quite substantially. And then from just over a thousand cc to about 1300 cc, that's the most expensive bracket and that's what a lot of big cruisers fall into, into that category. So this 900 cc this 900cc Vulcan falls in probably to the, the category just under the most expensive. So it, it still costs a bit, but it is more affordable than, say, a Harley 1200cc. And then ironically enough, as you get above 1300cc, it goes down again and becomes more affordable when you get into like the big twins of the, the Harleys and the Indians and also uh, the big Suzukis, etc. It ends up getting a bit cheaper above the 1300cc range, which um, kind of makes sense, kind of doesn't. All right, let's accelerate up to speed. 80 kilometer zone here, and there we are. Got up to 80 really comfortably in second gear, not revving too high. Uh, very comfortable acceleration. So these pipes on here are stock. The bike actually sounds pretty good, considering it's a completely stock, stock bike. Uh, but with a simple 40 minute changeover of exhaust, so you put bolt some Vance and Hines on here, it just brings the bike alive. So it's one of the most um, upgraded options, I would say, popping a set of Vance and Hines on here. It's an easy upgrade, it's affordable, and uh, it just makes the bike sound amazing. And they can do it in the shop for you before you even pick up the bike. So that's no problems at all. So I guess if you're considering a Vulcan 900, you're considering it because you like the cruiser category. 
uh, and it's a category that I absolutely love. So let's think about the competition to this Vulcan 900. What are the other choices in a similar size and bracket? So the obvious ones are the Harley Davidson Iron 883. It's a very similar sized engine and you're certainly buying into the Harley Davidson brand which a lot of people like. Um, and then you've also got the 1200cc Sportsters from Harley Davidson. There's a whole range of them uh, that, that they could be considered. But they're going to certainly push you up into the highest of insurance brackets. Uh, you've also got the Indian Scout 1200cc. And you, you have, I think there's like a 650 Yamaha XVs, which I think have been discontinued in the, in the following years. Um, so essentially in this category, you're, I think this is probably a bit of an outstanding bite in the cruiser, in the small cruiser category. Um, I think that it's got the looks. I think they've, they've nailed that box. It's got enough power and it, it's a smoother, more comfortable ride than an Iron 883. But I certainly do understand the badge desire for Harley Davidson. Like it's a it's a brand that I've been a big fan of for most of my life, mainly because of my dad. Um, but it's certainly one thing to consider is the badge. Um, I think the Vulcan is probably a better buy. In fact, I think it's definitely a better buy than the Iron 883. Um, but again, that's only my opinion. I know that there's a bunch of trolls out there they're going to disagree with me and tell me exactly what they think and that's totally fine but I would uh, again remember I love the Harley Davidson brand but I would probably lean towards this over an 883 um, if you were looking at a bigger displacement Harley well then that's that might be a different story and then the, the final question that I always ask myself when I'm doing a review of cars or bikes is would I buy one? Would I spend my money on one of these? And in this circumstance, I would definitely buy one of these. Now these are coming in at under $15,000, around about $15,000 if you put a set of Vance and Heinz pipes on it. And I think that's an absolutely phenomenal buy. I think it's a great option. Now the one thing that I would love to do with this, and I love the, um, the, go the bikes that have bobbed out the Vulcan 900s. I love the look of a bobber. And I know that you can get uh, a bobber kit. I mean, if you've got, the, if you've got the, the skills and the tools to do it yourself, that's awesome to bob it out and customise it just the way you like. But you can buy a bobber kit from Blue Collar Bobbers. And uh, if I was to buy a Vulcan, I think that's exactly what I would do. The downside is you lose the ab ability to pillion someone. You lose your back seat and I don't think I've seen many uh, full bobber kits where you've still got a passenger seat on board as well. Um, so that's one thing to consider if you're bobbing it out. But I would bob it out. I'd put a nice tight guard over the rear wheel, single rider seat. Uh, maybe lower it down a little bit, but I just think these things look amazing bobbed out. And the best thing about these is that they're affordable, and even if it's not your primary bike, I would like to have one of these as my secondary bike that I just take on days I feel like riding a bobber, uh, rather than having to ride one every day. I think that would be an awesome job for this. But I think it cruises really well. Um, I haven't had anyone on the back of here, but I'm almost certain that it would be a decent a decently comfortable two-person bike. Um, no bike other than the really big bag is a really comfortable for a passenger. Um, but I think this would be suitable. Um, and I think definitely I would buy this. Um, if you're a follower of my channel, you know that I'm, I've purchased another bike and I'm waiting on delivery. Um, and I have to be honest, I was considering changing my mind to get one of these. Um, and I, I was so close to making the decision to buy this instead of what I was buying. 
Um, but I'm sticking with my original plan for a number of reasons. Um, but I still would happily spend my money on this without a doubt. Anyway, here we are back at Penrith Motorcycle Centre. And uh, I'm about to jump on that blue Ninja 1000 uh, to do my very next review. Alright, now we didn't do the walk around while I was out on the Vulcan test ride. So I'm just going to do it here back at the shop. You can see we're here at Penrith Motorcycle Centre and this is the Kawasaki Vulcan 900 Classic. Now starting at the front of the bike, just a single front disc. I think I may have said in the video it's a twin, but it is just a single. It's 300mm disc. Coming down, nice, very large headlight. Coming down to floorboards there for plenty of seating or footing options. Nice big brake pedal and beautiful looking paint with a nice, I don't know how much you can see in the video, but a really nice little blue pinstripe, blue and white pinstripe down the tank. Um, coming over to the dash, the handlebars that I talked about, nice and wide, very old school. And the dashboard on the tank here, 20 litre tank. Now coming down to the pipes, these are stock pipes, but a very simple couple of bolts here and then a couple of brackets here and you can unbolt these and slip on the vent and hind pipes to make this thing sound absolutely amazing. You can see nice 900C, 903cc V-twin here and it is liquid cooled. Very, very nice. Coming around the back, single 270mm uh, disc brake at the back. And again, coming around the rear end, this is a really pretty bike. I, I'm very, very much a fan of the looks of this bike. I really like it. The belt drive here, as we talked about, nice belt drive, smooth, very, very low maintenance. And coming back down to the running boards on the left hand side, the foot, foot boards. All right, all in all, this was a really, really nice little bike. I liked it for a cruiser. Um, for a small cruiser, I guess you could say it's a small cruiser, a 900cc. Uh, and it's affordable and it looks good. And also the insurance, obviously, the insurance and rego is really affordable for it as well. So all in all, I really like the Kawasaki 900 Vulcan. Certainly if you're looking for a cruiser style of bike, um, put it on your list without a doubt. Very easy to ride, very low center of gravity, so it felt much lighter than it really was. So that's the Kawasaki Vulcan Classic 900.